Rebellion Zion up against Aura Fire. This is it. Who is going to make it to the playoffs? Rebellion with a win, they have a higher chance, but they'll still have to wait for Evos to lose. But for Aura, if they win here, they secure playoffs. It's time to dive in to the land of dawn to see the outcome. Let's see, will it be Aura Fire respecting the potential that the Atlas can have? And the answer is no. Only Facehugger has opted with that Purify. And this is where I get concerned. Aura Fire, they're going in for quite good engage heroes with the Bauman, with Grok as well. But if they look for initiatives on the on the fly, Ujinarko is going to be able to counter engage it with the Fatal Link. So we'll see how all of this pans out. Well, later on, even without the huge engage coming in, if Price can come in with a Blazing Duet, he is on that sprint as well. He can actually wreak a lot of havoc in the back line, so it comes down to execution, but Wind of Nature can be a very easy counter for the members of Aura Fire. Let's see, Rebellion trying to go for the contest onto the Litho. Legion Arco actually forced a flicker out there. Still gonna be the re-engage from Heinz. He dives in deep. Fearless jumps in as well. Go deep and taken low. But Dyrim isn't able to finish him off. Both roamers are able to escape for now. There's something I want to point out, though. Okay. Fluffy opted to go for the Petrify. We mentioned this many times, right? Petrify mm -hmm. or Execute. It shows the style of these players. Dyron goes Execute because he just wants to win lane. He wants to use that lane pressure to actually create space for his team. Meanwhile, Fluffy is very team-oriented XP lane. So he goes for the Petrify to, again, enable the team fights a little bit more. Remember as well that Aura Fire is going to have a little bit of an advantage in this early game as both of the mid laners are going to rely on that level 4 for Rebellion Zion, whereas Aura Fire, they have that KP from the fly other than Facehugger who needs the Feather Airstrike. But when it comes down to the contest, it might be difficult for a Rebellion Zion in the early game. I do believe that they just need to be a little bit more patient, wait for their power spikes to hit, and they are going to have an advantage in that 5v5. Exactly, they need a huge team fight to make things work out because right now there's just a lot more roam potential and there's a stronger jungle in the hands of that Dalmon. So, when it comes to objectives, there's a lot of potential for Aura Fire to get fully fearless away from his own jungle. Facehugger loses half his HP with the ultimate from the Aemon, but that won't really be very effective. Let's see, but their airstrike taking Region Arco out, but the real world manipulation, holy moly! Facehugger just got clapped by that as high is going to be taken down as well. Double kill by Sway Low. Godiva doesn't have the wild charge. He's opening up for nothing now. And Fearless has the retribution. Rebellion will be able to secure this objective. Aura Fire initially winning out the fight, but Facehugger was way too exposed. Very good execution by Rebellion Zion in that particular moment. But now we are going to have a chance to look at the emblem here. Actually. Well, off the bat, Demon Slayer, of course, needs to be talked about. But Fluffy also goes to the Festival of Blood, and he's going 1v1 against Dyrwin here. 1v1 duel in the EXP lane. It's always fun to see, but it's so scary. Does seem like Rebellion Zion now want to collapse on the bottom side. They have to be careful, though, because Ouija Narco already has that Fatal Lynx. Kaid is going to be very vulnerable if he does get a moment. Ooh. Okay. Ice checks that bush with the battle mirror image just in case Aura makes a cheeky play. The members are available for that counter engage if Rebellion Zion goes for that very dangerous dive. But right now, they're able to actually stave off the pressure. Claude is doing pretty well against the Irritel in the early game. That's a good sign for Rebellion Zion. Well, if you guys want to play a little bit, you know, with, with more entertainment value, if you guys want to just style on your opponents, go ahead and check out the new Battle Emotes 2022 MPL Edition. You guys can collect it right now. Ente, kada kada, ente, and tabla ajala, which means just go at it, fluffy. Okay, gonna be caught in the real world. Manipulation caught and taken down. Godiva goes for the wild charge, but will not oh, find anyone. No. Oh my god, it's a disaster as the Fatal Links connects. But look at the Feather Airstrike, able to zone the other members away. Flicker out of lethal counter, and the charge comes in, and the eyes is gonna try to dish out some damage. Obviously, won't be able to take down High just yet. He doesn't pop any of his resources, so it's all good. All good, and there's a counter engage coming in from Rebellion Zion off the fact that Fluffy was trying to be proactive here. So the shoe is on the other foot. In game number two, it was Dyron that was being very annoying and being punished. Now Rebellion Zion knows that play style and Fluffy gets taken out and Godiva was just forced to use his wall charge defensively and that shows that if he does so, Aura Fire will have a huge disadvantage in the actual fight. 
Let's see again. Real world manipulation popped in. Go Diva. Use the wild charge on the fearless and region Arco. Diron caught there. Still able to get away, but Petrify with the final blow. Comes in. Eyes to the bottom side though. It's able to dish out so much. Perfect match with Linker. Grace Hugger flying over the rest. Mega kill picked up. Fatal is only on towards Buffy. Aura pick up a victory in that fight. They get the turtle and a two for one. That was an interesting. It was interesting how that fight even began. Which Asuelo, with the real manipulation used early, early, very early on, he has the Ice Queen's one directly without any mana regeneration just yet, knowing that the utility is going to be very important. If he was able to slow more members in the previous fight, maybe things could have gone differently. Later on, he will be able to actually synergize uh, along with Fearless with the magical defense reduction on the Genius one. So that is a combo that they unconsciously have. We'll see here. Already Fearless being able to get that gold buff here in the sixth minute. It does seem like Aura Fire hasn't found much footing, even though they did win that team fight. They need to be able to stay consistent, try and go in for those team fights without knowing the Denarco does not have those fatal links. Because if they do, it might be very detrimental to the playstyle that they're going for here in game number three. Exactly. I think Wijanarko getting a good engage is almost a prerequisite right now for Rebellion Zion to get a very good fight. So they leave the bottom side and they're setting up for a play on the top side. Real Manipulation can be used to set up a dive, but all fire are ready to respond. They are actually, I think, one step ahead from Rebellion Zion due to the clearing speed. Yeah. For Aura, honestly, they need to grab a hold onto the neutral objectives a bit better. Hey, you guys can also grab food right now with a 90% discount code. What's the code? Hey, Turna? Grab.to slash MPL. Right, I keep forgetting, man. Or <laughs> you can just scan the QR code next to Chine right over there. There you go. Or a fire already doing exactly that on to the neutral objective with the lethal counter red tree. They have more ways to secure this objective. Godiva as well. Can't just go for the wild charge, but wait Oi. a minute. Siren MVP comes in with the knockout strike, casting it out. Fatal link three, two members into the real world manipulation. Chai, though, however, is still able to kite back. A brilliant disengage from Aura, but still, what a steal by Rebellion Zion, facilitated by Tyrant. Now that's the problem here. It might be Dyron getting caught. Or a fire looking for some compensation, looking for some revenge to what exactly went down whoa, whoa, whoa. in that previous team that's fight. Right. And it's not gonna work. No. Good movement from Dyron. He used a knockout strike onto the minions, but up top, say goodbye to Chai. And he gets taken out by the endless shards. And even in the bottom side, Dyron gets out. That was wow. really good by him. Jumps in. He has the Festival of Blood and he has Bloodless Axe, right? Mm -hmm. So go on to the minions. You are going to be able to get a whole lot of HP. Exactly. The mechanical play is coming in, but not to make things worse for the side of Aura Fire. Uh, Heiz has the Golden Staff already, so he is super low, though. He won't be participating in this next fight, it seems. Buffy, though, jumps in on the spray low. Has a lot of disengage there. Will be able to get out, but Legion Arco, what happened to him? He gets bursted down there, and does seem like Dyron is going to be caught a little bit, still able to go away, but without Wijanarko, without the main source of engage, Rebellion Zion need to look for something else on the board, and it seems like Aura Fire with this in mind, they're gonna force this mid side to push. Real world manipulation just popped in, just to zone Aura Fire away from that turret, and Aura are gonna translate it over, convert over to that top side. Now Aura seems to be outmaneuvering Rebellion Zion for the most part. I guess it is the superior wave clear coming in from every single hero has got a clear and most of the action we're seeing here is always Fluffy just dueling someone in the jungle. But right now Heist has to do a lot of damage. Godiva, very very low, chased away and so much action in both sides but that's the outplay coming in. Fluffy showing off. Good eye for an eye. Getting out of that damage. And I think that's why they went for the Benedetta, but no, Face Hugger, what happened? He just got caught in the mid lane, and look, that's why you bring the Purified Giant. Gonna get taken down, he popped the squid as well. Fluffy in the midst of it all, doesn't have the pressure five, but it's gonna be Godiva jumping jumping in with a wild charge, only catching Dyron. I for a oh, nine, no. but look, it is not good for Aura. It's gonna be the slows coming in with the ultimate high taken out. It's a four for zero. Rebellion recalling in front of Aura's faces as they go towards the Lord. 5,000 gold lead, an uncontested lord at that. And Aura Fire, they're left with nothing. 
Kuriva trying to look for a play, but unfortunately, he gets caught out by Wijanarko as well as the zoning coming in from Suelo. And this is looking grim for Aura Fire in the 10th minute of the game. That's just why the critical members, the members that you know need to be protected, has to have that Purify or you need a Diggy because that is exactly what happens. Wijanarko has no qualms at all, just using the Fatal Links onto one person because he knows that Kayit is the right target, is a valuable target enough for him to do so. We're in Zion now with the Lord and with the superior team fighting, it seems like they are going to be trying to actually overpower and brute force or a fire. Rebellion Zion has just been so different since Wijanarko stepped in as a roamer to replace uh -oh. Val, but here we go, Fluffy in a 2v1. Oh, very good timing by Fluffy there. He held on to his dash for a bit there, just setting off the tempo, right? So that Zion can't really read it. Yep. Rebellion though, coming into that mid lane. You can already see the siege here coming down. And it's very brilliant the way that they're pushing in this first wave, right? They're using the mid lane, just crashing it in with the top side as well. Just so that the bottom side can build with a slow push in an upcoming wave. And they're going to use this mid lane to actually try to pop that mid lane passive for the base turret. Will it pop? That's the big question. Yeah, there you go. No more mid lane passive on the base turret. Will mean that Rebellion will have a little bit more room to play uh, when this Lord comes up in that bottom side. I think when the world situation is popped up will be important. Better Ashrax already used right now and Vigenarko looks for blood, but he won't be able to find a great engage just yet. Hot power will be taken out quite soon and Rebellion Zion playing it patient as they should against a team as dangerous as Aura Fire. To be honest, Aura Fire does still have a chance to defend, right? But no when it goes like that. Oh, that's a bit forced there. Aura have a chance to actually come back in this team fight. But Aura just take one kill. They back off. Go Diva with a flicker and the shards though follows oh! it through over the giant as well. Rebellion! It felt forced, but it did not end up forced. Rebellion are able to pick up a 2 for one only trading in the rover. Fearless. What was that? He's fearless, all right. I thought he was going to get one, but he got both right here. And with Suelo still available, the Siege is very much there. Here comes a feather airstrike, though. The clear is still very real for the side of Aura Fire. The top and the bottom lane is still pushing, though, Arashi as well as Mirko. Aura Fire does still have the option to defend because of the high ground potential that they have. And it does seem Rebellion's eye on. They don't want to overcommit. They don't want to make mistakes at this moment of the game. With a 7,000 gold lead, they're going to be retreating. They don't need to at all. Right now, Windwalker and Scarlet Phantom available for Kaid, but he is never left alone in these fights. So many sources of danger. Ruin Manipulation, Blazing Duet, Fatal Links, and of course, the, you know, the Amon just jumping on him. His fearless is crazy. Word of Nature will be secured right here, but of course, the rest of the threats are pretty much magical, so he is in a very tough spot. It's difficult, right? Because if he pops the Wind of Nature against the Amon, he can't do much. So Yves is going to still also be a huge problem. I guess he can use it against the, the ultimate coming in from Hives, but other than that, it's going to be very difficult as Godiva looks for a concealed play to get this Lord. Who will come out on top as Wijanarko oh. still has that flicker ulti combo? Rebellion needs to pull the trigger right now. Dyron set it up perfectly for Fluffy to actually go into that bottom side, but now he's back here. Rebellion might actually be caught. Dyron goes into the knockout side, but the Israel comes in while charge as well. Dyron taking low, oh. but Suelo picks up the kill, and in the midst of it all, highs versus high. We got a pause, ladies and gentlemen. Right as the fight was about to continue, I wonder who Aura Fire went for the pause, unfortunately, here. That is have confirmation, <laughs> but oof, all right. Talk about sporadic here. We know that both Aura and Rebellion, they are both teams that are well known for playing crazy for these very sporadic team fights, full, full of chaos. But right there, my god, everything was happening at the same time. Feather Airstrike, at the same time, Fearless going in towards the back line, and the other side, you can see that Heist was still fighting 1v1 against uh, uh, High as well on the Bauman, so what was going on? Yeah, Facehugger instantly got deleted, I think, with the shards coming in yeah. from Fearless. So that's a huge hero taken down for Rebellion Zion, as it seems like it was Godiva who is having trouble. He is still reconnecting into the game, but it does give us a little bit more time to review what happened so far, right? It's very difficult for Aura Fire. The engage potential from the Fatal Links is so heavy, but 
even other than that, even not on the back of the Fatal Links, the damage from the Paquito as well as the Amon just renders Aura Fire useless at this point. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Amon is so free. That's the main problem right now for Aura Fire. I feel like actually just the damage dealers are so free. Well, that's a problem, right? No AoE crowd control, and even if you want to use Godiva on cover duty, essentially, it's really difficult when he is trying to find an Amon in the middle of such a chaotic team fight. And this is the benefit of having an assassin in the jungle, right? Aura Fire, uh, the doesn't have to be worried as much about their backline getting sniped. But for Aura Fire, that is not the case. They lose three in that fight earlier. Off the back of Wijan Arco, just zoning Kite away and Sloppy? Oh, way low. Whoa. What's going on here? Uh-oh, I don't know about this one, man. Profi just definitely bit too much, man. He went in with... I first taken down there. That was just... Yeah, I don't know. It does feel like Orifier are kind of tilted with a few of these individual plays. Rebellion Zion have built up an 11,000 gold lead. With this, they're looking for that end. Orifier. Oh, man. This is looking very bleak for them. Look how active Dyron and Fearless has been in the game. Total 14 out of 17 kills. <laughs> it's insane. Dyron, so active on the map. 11,000 gold lead now for Rebellion Zion, as this might be the final stand for Aura Fire if they can't defend. Ujinarko with the flicker as well. <laughs> On to Chai, and he is not going to be able to play here. Fatal Links as well. He's fading at the time, coming in. Diamond jumps in. Chai, and oh! Good oh. cancel from Godiva, saving his marksman. Fluffy able to pick up a kill there. It's traded in for the jungler. High taken down. Fluffy onto the back lines. High is dealing with the damage, coming in with the BMI as well. Oh. Fluffy still trying to survive, going in onto a mob, but he will fall to the hands of Highs. Meanwhile, Diamond, it's been a story right here. He's going to go onto the back lines, fishing on damage. Is distracting and rebellion will come out victorious. They have done it. They've secured not playoffs just yet, but a higher chance to make it to the playoffs. All they need to do now is to hope that Evo's legend loses their final.